Well, it's nice to uh, meet you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. After we, t you know, emailed, what have you, I was thinking, uh, especially coming out of a film like Anomalisa, which uh, has it's had a limited theatrical, right? It went over two million today. Uh huh. So, so I think it's open in twenty or thirty theaters in the okay. country. Twenty or thirty. Oh, or okay. thirty or forty, and it's not a lot. No, right? but. It was two. It was two in LA and two in New York for the first, I think, week or two. Okay, so it's kind of bumped up. Yeah. And the reason I mention it is because often I would have to talk to a publicist and for the film, you know. But since uh -huh. I guess it's already out, it's not as big a deal. Because you must have been involved, with, uh, I assume, in like press days and all that kind of thing. I've done a lot of that, and also people just do what you've done. Called me up. That's sort of how I got the thing. I just did. I mean, I, I do these like not every day, but pretty regularly. Yeah. That's part of the the anxiety that was surfacing as I was thinking about it. There's always this silly pressure, and again, it's neurotic, about not ask the same questions or to you know how to charm and 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 to connect effectively. All those things when somebody does a lot of interviews, uh, there's really there's nothing you can do. You just have to sort of be yourself and hope yeah, for the I mean, best. I, I don't mind doing this. That's good. Well. Okay, well, a little background, because I guess some people that are listening may not know any much about you. Uh -huh. Shame on them. <laughs> oh, by the way, do I look familiar at all? I just had a question for you. Did I meet you at the Wolfen thing? No, wasn't it that. that. But uh, there, if, I just thought sometimes some people, I get, a, I get it a lot anyway, so it wouldn't even be necessarily a, a meaning that we had met. But we actually did, uh, but it was completely unrelated. So what it was was a couple of years ago, more than a couple, like five years ago, maybe six years ago, I had a job for a brief period working in <laughs> up the block. Oh, you mean? The, the wine shop. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, you used to come in once in a while. Right. And I would help you. <laughs> <laughs> no more of that for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, you went, I don't remember, what it was, maybe sake or something. Yes, Nothing I used to drink to those big bottles of sake. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, but I just wanted to, I, I didn't know if it was, it was gnawing at you or something like that. No, when you, I did this thing at the Black Hawk, uh -huh. where, the, where they showed Wolfen again, about... Oh, is that the... Uh, Michael Wadley movie? Okay, was, was that, uh, who's in that? Jack, is that, that's not the one with Jack Nicholson, right? That's just Wolf. Wolf no, oh, Wolfen was, was Albert was Finney. Finney yeah. Albert Finney, much better, I think. Or just more uh, sort of uh, unconventional. Or yeah, something. well, they're making it. They're also making a feature film documentary about it. They are? And they're trying to get me to do a long interview, and I'm sort of debating. Are you, whether oh, just debating. Well, that's, not, that's better than dreading. No, I mean... That's I, next, I just, yeah, once you agree I to hate, do it. I sort of don't like... I hate those commentaries on DVDs, and I hate people being interviewed for DVDs. Do you? Well, it sort of ruins What's the experience the of watching the movie. I it's see. Like, yeah. It's sort of counter to the, the idea the movie's magical. and. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if... The, <laughs> That's tr hopefully true. It's sort of like hanging out in the lobby before a play yes, goes on, and 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 chatting with the uh, yeah. the playwright or something like that. Speaking wow. of which, we could start off with uh, talking about uh, the Paradise um, Factory Theater, which is or just across the street. Yeah, it's right over there. Right I'm there. I'm looking at it. That's yeah. a pretty cool that you can just look out your window at, uh, in your front I yard. Have a lot of cool things in my life. Yeah, I'm a very lucky boy. Yeah. Well, I remember hearing about one thing, which was pretty mind blowing. That, like, uh, because I watched you uh, on I, my due diligence, but I watched uh, some uh, Huffington stuff that you did not too long ago with Ricky, oh, the guy yeah. Ricky Camilleri. Yeah, yeah I think came off pretty well. Oh, okay, I think you did. Well, you told the great story, which maybe is worth repeating. I don't know. Again, we could, I guess, just play a clip from it too. <laughs> it might save time. It was for just some that, show. That was that great was... for Chimino. Oh. It, Oh, I talked about that. The Chimino God. story. That was great. So great. I had no idea about that. That was really something else. But yeah. What were you going to say? No, I think that was for some TV show I was doing, so I can't oh. remember. I think I never talked about what I was on there to talk about. Right. So I was always, well, uh, always a little nervous after I do that. And that, the, that you're going to you know, forget people, that? Well, the people that, no, I don't, you know, I'm just worried that they're going to be upset that they had this chance to get some publicity and I didn't accommodate. Go going into these things, maybe you should just sort of be clear. You're not probably going to get what you're thinking you want, or you want if it you're sending me to do your publicity. Yeah, it depends. You know, but that is my theater. Uh huh. And it started '83. Is that about right? '83 is when I got the building from the city, and then for about five or six years, I just worked in there 
because there's no water, no gas, no electric. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, took money from acting jobs I had. Oh wow! So and uh, so you bought it from the city for like a buck or one of I those deals. I bought it from the city with two partners in 1977 or seven. No, no, no 2007. Sorry. Oh, 2007. Seven, yeah, 25 years after I first got in there. Oh, so you got you were renting it or leasing it or I leased it from the city for 25 it. years. I see. Okay. And then we we bought it in 77 in 2007. Let's keep saying that. Yeah. Um, well, I can fix that. So you yeah. sound like. A, um, but I've done a lot of work there, and I did, especially as, yeah. after the first five or six years of just working on the the building physically. Um, I just would produce people's work that I loved, like you know, Mabu Mines is. What's that? Mabu Mines. No, but this is sort of legendary theater company, and, okay. and the Worcester Group. Uh, well, then of course they did something there. Um, Richard Foreman sort of hung out with me there for a while. The pub Bread and Puppet. So it was still very in that period of time. It was still a very exciting period uh, as far as like uh, underground theater or well there's no theater now so underground or above (laughs) 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 i mean there's a little bit but not much well uh, down the block is this uh theater up on bleaker around right over oh yeah yeah the 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 thing project the the yeah the culture project right yeah i just saw something there two weeks ago how was that somebody asked me to go it was good it was a a one-woman show Uh which they seem to do there a lot yeah. Those types of things. Those are seem to be more sort of ways of. Uh, so is it uh, you don't? But you you have something going on now, or do you have something coming up that you're working on at the at the no. Paradise Factory? I mean, I'm writing something, but I wouldn't say anything about it so unless I finished it. Okay, sure, makes sense. So you you I rent it out uh, whenever you can for. I rent things. it at times, yeah. Okay, and so and if this slot comes up that's not going to be rented because it's too late to rent it, then I'll try to throw something together quickly. And other times, like a repertory thing. Or like a play? That's a play. No, I write it for the. I never. Do you? Yeah, yeah. How many plays have you written? Roughly thirty. Full length. Yeah. And. Mm-hmm. And probably I mean, but I write. What I do is I write. I start. I start something because it interests me, and I write until I run out of gas. And hopefully, gotcha. if I run out of gas at page one hundred twenty, I'm happy. If it's at page thirty, yeah, there's no play. And so right. I've written probably. Again, forty or fifty screenplays, but I probably started two hundred of them. I mean, I write them all the time. Mm, makes sense. And and um, do, uh, what's the what? What do you do as far as casting them? Like, do you the plays? Hold, yeah, I mean, do you hold auditions or do you cherry pick like people you want to work with? Well, the first play I did was called What Happened Was. Yeah, which you adapted into a, a film, yeah. of course. And then the problem with that was that I was going to be in it, but I couldn't get anybody to play the other part. I oh. had a lot of friends in the business, and I would ask them, and they'd read it, and they go, "This is a nice play, but I, it's really there's nothing happening. I I don't think I can do this." Uh-huh. People whose names I wouldn't mention because it would embarrass them. And then I found Karen Silas, who did it. Um, well, she's great. But it was it was I mean I got her like the day before the last day I could have started rehearsal. Really? So I barely got anybody to be in that one. That would um, <laughs> when I did you had to have to play both parts. That would have been tricky <laughs> for you, even for you. And the second play I'd wrote for Wally Shawn, who's a friend of mine, and Julie Haggerty, and my then, um, now ex-wife, Karen Young. Mm-hmm. So I wrote for people that I knew, usually. Mm-hmm. Um, so Easier to do when there's uh, like yeah. a small, really small cast. Because generally what I would do is I'd find a location I wanted to shoot on, and then I'd recreate the location in the theater, and I'd write a play for that location. Mm-hmm. So that's how I did what happened was, and the wife, and, you know, a thing called Wang Dang, and a lot, a lot of different plays. Mm-hmm. I just did this. That's my newest one. Shape of something squashed. Squashed. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I did as a movie. Yeah, yeah. I saw that on your, um, yeah, filmography. Uh, so, oh, that's that's a shame. I would love to. See, well, I hope you go go on. See on it. Vimeo. Just right. watch it. I will. Um, I'm pretty good about doing that too. Like I really try to not. You know, when I have somebody on, I generally try to see. Yeah, nobody but ever I, does. Everybody says, oh, I'm going to go on that. Pay. I'm going to go see that movie tomorrow. And nobody ever does. <laughs> Never. Well, I'm in good company <laughs> or, or the worst. No, but I've seen uh, tons of your films. <laughs> so I can just name another But not one. ones that I've directed. Those including. The, yes, I have. I saw those two. Oh, okay. The, well, the two earlier ones that you mentioned, The Wife yeah. and. Uh, I mean, definitely what happened was I was uh, was definitely. Yeah. Um, I saw that many years. Well, probably and that's how I know Charlie. Charlie Kaufman, you mean? Is that short Charlie we're talking about? Yeah. Well, one it could be one of the Charlies. <laughs> you probably know quite a Charlie few. Charlie Chan. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> no, I don't know if you go that far back. 
Uh, no, he he had seen what happened was and started writing to me. Then you did you not know the story? I've heard it. So, but don't let that well, no, he, discourage was, you from. Re- he was living in Minnesota, I think, and mm-hmm. his wife said, "Let's go see this movie. I hear it's good." And he said, I don't know. "But she got him to go, and he sort of loved it and wrote." started writing to me mm. emails which is like this is 1994 maybe uh-huh. so his e- email was just sort of starting oh barely yeah yeah i mean everybody had that copy serve address at that time or yeah, AOL. Yeah, yeah 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 um and so he wrote back and forth a little bit probably i don't know two or three times and then mm-hmm. i never heard from him and then he became charlie kaufman and then he, ca- he started talking about me when he's interviewed just like uh, arbitrarily like somebody who he, that, that he's Sort of he what like uh, in terms of the films or the f- particular film or that it's like a, as he Tom Noonan is somebody he wants to work with. S- no, he said it was a big influence on his life and sort of can, gave him the feeling that he could make a movie because he had been sort of didn't know sure if he could. And so that was nice. And he, so then Very he nice. would talk about that a lot when he'd be interviewed and people would say, you should talk to Charlie, you know, because you mm-hmm. guys would really be great together. And I go, well, you know, if Charlie meets me, he's going to know I'm a jerk and. He won't promote me anymore, and then there'll be nobody promoting me. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to say the opposite thing, but but he, we we just one day we just ended up talking on the phone, and then started hanging out. Mm-hmm. The self-deprecating thing, though, uh, I don't. I mean, I'm sure by me or him, by you at the uh, moment, uh, in terms of. Uh, I mean, I of course may develop that opinion. I don't know. I don't know. I can't predict. But it's it it seems for somebody who describes himself as being um, difficult. Uh, or impossible to direct. Impossible. Okay, that's not necessarily difficult. Personally, <laughs> of course. Is that what you were going toward? Uh, uh, that works. I mean, uh, sure. Well, I don't know. I I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, oh, I guess I did also hear you did talk about the scenes in in, in Synecdoche. Synecdoche. Nobody gets it, right? Synecdoche. Yes. Uh, in the, your scenes in Synecdoche. Synecdoche. I, you know, you can rehearse it and rehearse it. <laughs> it, doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to make a difference that you you had trouble there sometimes, maybe. I don't know. Is that true? Trouble? I don't know. Like, um, it, uh, I think I'm just remembering one anecdote again. It could just be very isolated, so I should probably just move on. Oh, about kissing it, Phil? Yeah, I think it was about that or and working along with him. But that's that's just a very... No, I, I, you know, Charlie's very, very intense and very detail-oriented mm-hmm. and hard-working, like, prepared. And I would, I get sort of silly on movies, and I don't, you know, I try to stay loose and mm-hmm. and needle him a little, which I think at the beginning was not a thrill for him. But, you know, I love Charlie. Charlie and I are, I've done every, I've been in everything he's ever directed. Because what I was going to say is that it's, it, it seems like people like the concept of working with you, if not actually working with you. Right, I mean, because you have an appeal as a as an actor who is very memorable in in the roles they play and um, adds a certain uh, unpredictability or mm, I don't know something. What you have is charisma, but it's a different kind of charisma. <laughs> <laughs> it's a charisma that's hard to kind of define. It doesn't exactly scream out on the screen, but you draw people's attention and people are interested in what you're doing. I think, mm-hmm. and then they are like, "That guy, I got to, I want to work with him." Huh. That's my, my my feeling that people have because you've worked with. Yeah, them I mean, how you, uh, I don't know if it happens yeah. still, but I used to get jobs if some movie of mine was playing on like HBO like twenty years ago, and we'd be playing in a cycle, we'd be playing a like lot, like Heat, or something like, and I'd get a job right away. Yeah, that's how I got jobs a lot. <laughs> now people have so much access to stuff; it's sort of a different scene. And how so? Though, well, now that is it you, not now you watch what you want to watch. I Back see. then, you oh. sit and watch what they gave you. Mm-hmm. So when I was forced upon people, they would have to pay attention, and they would then hire me. Now I don't. You know, it's different. It's just different what people look at. I mean, I don't. Did you feel um, because your your sort of striking look, you know, tall, uh, thin, your eyes are kind of dreamy. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Uh, no, but these these quali- these qualities. I mean, you have a striking look. You know, everybody tells you that, and that. So you would get particular roles, right, offered to you. I mean, uh, whether it's man hunter or, um, you know, heavies or. I think what happened. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, the first thing I ever did that made a splash was a play called Buried Child by mm-hmm. Sam Shepard. Sure, oh, of course. And I did the original so. cast. Yeah, this was right around the time you were just getting into film. Yeah, right? I just started. It was like the second or third job I ever had. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just it's. 
that's another whole story how I started acting. But um, I'd been acting less than a year, and I got this big part. And the guy is sort of childlike and charming, but also really scary. And Burry Child. Yeah. You're so one of the brothers. Is it a brother? Yeah, br- uh, yeah. yeah, I'm Tilden. So everybody in Hollywood came to see the play because Sam was becoming a big movie star, and, you know. He was, the, he was definitely the flavor of the year. And people would fly out to New York. So I got seen by everybody in exactly. the business playing this part. So when they thought, like, oh, let's get that guy, that weird guy in that play, you get weird guy parts. So it's, it's partly that. It's also probably true that I'm, I'm a little weird. Do you know where it comes from, or it was just always that way? Where does the weirdness come from? Well, uh, you're, the, what you're calling weird, just kind of uh, doing your own thing and, and um, believing in whatever it is you bring to the acting and, um, or life, maybe. I think I didn't have a great time growing up, um, which well, most people probably don't have. Um, but I had a particularly difficult time, and difficult time in high school. Because um, you were taller th- than no, everybody? No, just or th- th- priests who want to fuck you. And you, did you go to a Catholic, priest, a Catholic high school? Uh, well, yeah, I would yeah. hope so, if that's the priest you're trying to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and being sort of, and being, a sort of a very, yeah. being, being a very bright, sort of out there person in a school that I didn't want to be going to, and kids would sort of hate me for that, because I was sort of a, I didn't want to be at this place, and I, was, I became a prick about it. I thought well, fuck them, I'm not going to sort of play this game. Yeah. And was sort of seen as this odd guy. Because that's the only thing I could do to protect myself. In Gre- um, this is in Greenwich, right? Connecticut. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, eventually, you know, teachers who taught at this school were arrested and people committed suicide. And it was just a really difficult, but beyond all the other shit that I was going through at home and stuff. So, And then I dropped out of college and just wandered around for five or six years which was not a fun experience, but I did that. So I've had a lot of experience being sort of on the fringe of stuff and being angry and not being able to sort of express it directly, but doing it in some maybe odd way. Mm -hmm. Um, If we want to get psychological about it. But I mean, that's, that's, you know, on paper, it looks like I was like the ideal kid. I lived, grew up in Greenwich and I went to Yale and Right, you know, and did all the stuff, but it wasn't really like that. It was, it was not a fun time. Um, and so I think that's, I felt very comfortable being that persona because I'd lived so much of that. So it probably was not unusual that I'd gotten the part of the guy in Buried Child, and it's probably I probably would have done those other parts, odd parts too, even if I wasn't typecast from having done that. Uh, well, um, who directed that? Or Sam? No, did he direct, Sam he didn't just wrote see it. it. Oh, he never saw it. No. Um, guy he did Rob- see his first, uh, the first New York production of that particular play that he. No, he never saw it here. Okay. Um, Who was opp- played opposite you? Well, let me just get Robert Woodruff directed it. Okay. Who's this kind of genius theater director? Who is just an amazing talent and a great guy and very smart for recognizing that I was would be good in this play. Mm-hmm. And and who played? Who else was in the cast? God, I'm trying to think. Uh, um, J. O. Sanders. Played my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, guy named a, a woman named Jacqueline Brooks played my mother. These people are all probably not around even anymore. No. Dick Hamilton, Rusty Russ, Mary McDonald. That name sounds very familiar. Yeah. Mary McDonald's the she was in Dance with Wolves. Oh sure. She right. Was yeah. No. Dan yeah, Canyon. Was, she must have been also quite young then too. She was pretty young. I mean, yeah. I was the second youngest person in the cast, and I was supposed to be the second oldest. Well, you're an act. You're so I played like a girl. 55 year old guy. No, yeah. I didn't. Oh, make that enough. much older. Sorry, what? I'm sorry, that much older. That's quite a bit. Cause 30 yeah, I was years. like 29, and I was supposed to be playing 55 to 60. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was younger than my, <laughs> than my son. Than the guy played your... My son. I yeah, played, played Vince, my son. <laughs> um, and what theater was this in? Do you remember? Yes, of course I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did the first at Theater for New City, which at the time was at 2nd Avenue and 10th Street. Yes. Which yeah. is now it's at... First Avenue and 12th Street or something. Um, and then we moved from there to the, which was then called the Theater de Lis, which is now called the Lucille Lortel Theater. Mm-hmm. And we did it there for like six That's months. That's all the way over on the west side, Yeah, right? in Christopher Street in Hudson. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did it in Philadelphia for a short while and then came back and did it Circle the Circle circle in the Square. Cir- Not Circle in the Square, but the Circle, circle Rep. Circle Rep, yeah. And we did Circle Rep for like eight months. 
Why would the second company call themselves something with a circle in it? You figure that's like there was already you two. Mean circle and square and circle rep? Yeah. I'm not sure. Kind of confusing yeah. for people that are just trying to. Even I was confused yeah. by that. Um, so I did it for a long time. I did it for a year, more than a year. What's that like after? Uh, I mean, a fresh audience means, and, and um, is each night is, is always a, kind of a thrill, I suppose. But, um, but, but how, how does. The more I found the more I did it, the more I loved it. Yeah? Well, I loved the challenge of trying to make it great, you know? Uh huh. And I would go in and I would say to people backstage, I'm going to do the best fucking performance I've ever done in my life tonight. Uh-huh. Seriously. Yeah. And you meant it. You and I would go out whatever. there and do my fucking hardest to, to do what I could. And you really learn a lot. You learn a lot about acting, which I knew nothing about because mm-hmm. I'd only acted in one other play. Mm-hmm. Um, but you came out of Yale, you said. But d- I, didn't, I didn't act until years after I dropped out. Okay. So you didn't go to Yale for and the acting program? No, no. Okay. I was pre-med. Oh, I was going to be a okay. doctor. Okay. Uh, imagine imagine dad- that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, your dad, your dad might have been happy, or your mother. My my father would have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, did your okay. parents actually? And you don't have to go this route if you don't want to, of course. Uh, but did your parents see you acting? And uh, my when father you came died back? before I ever acted. Um, my mother did see me, and <laughs> it's hard to explain. My mother, my mother's been dead a long, a little while. Um, she, I don't think she understood, she pretended to not understand anything about art and thought art was silly and that people should get like regular jobs. Mm-hmm. And I used to say, mom, you know, I got, I got this job and this great play, you know, and I'm going to be doing a movie. And she'd say, I'd be happy if you worked in a gas station. I mean, she wasn't, I'm making her sound like, but I mean, she sort of was like Catherine Hepburn. You'd be like, but they, she sort of liked to, mm-hmm. and then she finally came and saw mm-hmm. Barry Child. And I came out afterwards, and she actually was impressed, uh, which was sort of amazing. She had never been impressed by anything I'd ever done. I mean, I'd done a lot of sort of mm-hmm. special sorts of things that most parents would probably be happy their kids did. But she was actually surprised and said, how did you ever learn how to do that? I said, I don't know. I just started doing it. Well, um, you had her 100% attention. Yeah. For one thing. But she saw me play music and wasn't impressed, and mm-hmm. she saw me, you know, a lot of do a lot of stuff. Um, but my father never saw me. Um, but, and he had, my father grew up in West Haven, which is right near New Haven, just across the, sort of the channel there. And he had always, he had been in the Yale band, which is a jazz band, mm-hmm. and had always dreamed of going to Yale and got in, couldn't go because he didn't have the money. So he went off and became a jazz musician and then eventually quit that and became a dentist, but he was a famous jazz guy. And he, so he really wanted me to go to, to Yale, so that was a lot of pressure on me to go there. Oh, and sure. So when I dropped out, it sort of broke his heart. So yeah. years later, after he was dead, I got a gig teaching there to sort of make amends to him. This one's for you, Dad, kind of thing. But did you have to go back to school and get a degree to do that? No, or is it I didn't. At that I, no, I only I, ask you that because... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting. No, no, no. Go on. <laughs> I'm only asking that because I just assume that when you're teaching, you know, especially at an Ivy League, I don't know, like you would have to have a degree. But I was maybe. such a, so pre, preeminent in my field that I didn't need the fucking sheepskin. There you go. But I did go to a reunion. Put reu- that on your wall, motherfucker. But I went to a reunion, uh-huh. which the, see, that brings, I, it brings up my hackles. Um, I went to a, you know, I dropped out of Yale and never went back and... I wasn't that close to people, and I was—I had some friends, but I went back after I might, I think my twenty-fifth reunion. Somehow I went back. God knows why I picked that, and I went back, and I was at this sort of soiree, and I, as a joke, I put Professor Noonan on my, on my tag, because mm-hmm. it's sort of a gag. Sure. Um, and this guy, a small guy, small guys often don't like me, came up to me and he said, "What are you doing here anyway?" And I said, what do you mean? He says, you didn't even graduate. You're not an alumni. You shouldn't be at this thing. I got really pissed off. And I said, I teach here. He said, well, that doesn't mean you can still come to the alumni weekend. And I was like, what is this fucking guy's problem? So. Yeah. Oh, so it would have been the, the 25th year after what year you would have. Would have graduated. Would have graduated. But, yeah, which but, is, but. Was, I'm trying to remember what date that would have been. 98, maybe? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you had already become 
pretty recognizable in the industry. Like a yeah, lots of big actors. Yeah, I mean not movies. And yeah. Um. So should we be asking more like regular questions or is this sure 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 no, yeah. do, no I'm not encouraging you to but are we going to get in trouble if we keep talking about my personal life? This is my gig. I can <laughs> ask whatever. No, this is totally what I do. This is kind of what I do. Yeah. You know, I think I'm a little bit on eggshells, but just a little bit. Okay. Which is you know eggshells because of um just not knowing you in any context other yeah. than watching you and and, oh, okay. and, and and acting and also usually when i uh more often than not well i was going to say it's you know somebody i'm talking to is in a in a particular project which you're promoting but that's not true I, I get a lot of people on here that aren't i think i'm just trying to find excuses i don't know there's a i don't know there's a l- slight level of intimidation i don't know where it's coming from if i'm totally honest. it's all it's, it's on me i but, mean that's cultivated what, a little Okay. Probably. Yeah, maybe. I see. I guess maybe seeing you talk in in person, you know, you yeah. one one just sort of uh, creates, you know, yeah, an image of somebody else. Or, yeah. You know. I, this is a very difficult business, and being slightly intimidating is not a bad thing to have about you. Right. It's sort of something that you are called upon to develop. It's just. It's not a. Makes sense. It's sort of a stupid business. It makes sense. I mean, the nicer you are, the less attention you get. The nicer you are, the less anybody cares whether you're doing okay or not. Well, it's a dilemma I have it all the time, uh, you know, because I, I kind of feel like I do a number of different things, but this in this kind of context of the podcast yeah. and all, <clears throat> you know, where I'm tr- I'm, I am the nice guy generally, and I wonder, should I be huh. more, I don't know, controversial or huh. pushy or, I don't know. It would feel forced. Yeah. So... You know, but I wonder if I wouldn't get more people interested in listening potentially. Also, because always, I'm I don't know. Let me, I, yeah, maybe it's better to have on maybe the people like that than to be. I that mean, way. your picture and stuff you sent, you seem very cuddly. You seem like this is going to be fun and easy, and this guy seems yeah. very down to earth and I guess like so. sweet guy. Yeah, that's pretty much me, yeah. cuddly. Yeah. yeah. I didn't mean to. Did that, did that offend you? No, 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 okay. no, no. Coming from you, it's a, it's very nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, by another thing, I, I just well, here's another thing. I just went to. It was a strange thing where I, uh, I went and I talked to Esther Ballant of all people. Oh yeah, I just had dinner with her. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Well, was. what's weird is that um, I had somebody else on, and I was gushing about Strangers in Paradise or, or something like that. Yeah. And. Um, and this person heard the podcast, and she wrote me, and she said, you know, I, Esther's living in New York, and I, if you want to talk to her, I can arrange it. I said, sure, why not? That sounds fun. I didn't, I hadn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. my plan, but, it, you know, necessarily, but it was perfect kind of person. And so I went over there. And then, I, as I said, a, little, little, a few days ago, I was looking at this Huffington Post stuff, and you were describing that dinner part, Thanksgiving dinner? That you oh, had I, this uh, all sort of star study thing that came up. Oh right, with yeah, yeah, with Phil. Phil was there, and Joan Rivers, and that whole thing. It was a very uh, eclectic, but just yeah. an amazing, right, collection of people. Yeah, f- I mean, Louis just wrote me an email and said we're having Thanksgiving dinner. You bring, come on and bring your family. Louis C.K. Yeah, I'm working with Louis starting on Monday again. Oh, you are on the new series. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird because Esther was a former love interest of his on his last show. Right. Were you an actor before? Me? No. Yeah, no, oh, I've done. one here. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure I was. Uh, I've done a little bit, but um, here and there, but I'm no, no, yeah. no. But uh, I was uh, in the music industry for a number of years, and then that kind of fell apart. Producing and, but, or playing? No, neither. Uh, well, I am a musician. I have like a jazz guitar background, but I... I um, was in uh, working at the Sony in distribution, I guess, but oh, okay. not even really as a distrib- in the distribution part. It was like in the creative services area where all the production of the printing of the things uh-huh. and, huh. and design and all that was happening. But um, and then uh, and then that kind of all collapsed. A lot of people got lost their jobs. Oh, right. So I did the wise thing and I moved into film, thinking that was going to be uh, a, yeah. a better way to make money, less likely to collapse. Yeah, right. Um, well, but it's less, well, it's less. Th- d- music is such a dirty business that its collapse is probably cheered on by a lot of people. Yeah, well, it, but what it does is it returns a lot of, I guess, the power to the musician. Even though maybe they're a lot more of them seem to be making less money. 
yeah. or harder to make a career, but they're forced to get the music out on their own because it's yeah. almost impossible to get any kind of distribution. You know, and it's such a sleazy, awful it, business. I mean, compared sure. to movies are bad, but n yeah. no comparison to music because yeah. I, I played for a long time. Did you piano? What did you? What was your instrument? I play piano every day, but I played guitar a lot. Mm -hmm. I was a big John McLaughlin fan. I, okay, I could play really fast without uh -huh. much sense of any of it, but I could just tear. As a like a rock music, or are you talking about like I played fusion okay. and sort of Indian ethnic y stuff? Oh yeah, with acoustic and played what they the world music. What? Okay, mm -hmm. world music, whatever they call yeah. it. Yeah, but like I, I played with you know Ali Akbar Khan. Yes, the great Sarad player. I think I've heard his name. He's probably dead now, but he's th he's the greatest player ever. And he played in B he played in Boston when I was living there once. And I went to the concert and afterwards went backstage and convinced his drummer because mm -hmm. they were doing like a two week thing in the Boston area to play with me every day. Mm -hmm. That was sort of one of the high points of my life. Uh, so d you had uh, just real great dexterity. Is that what you're saying? Like uh, in your yeah, I could tear. I yeah. could play like yeah, really fast. Uh, I play you know play and play and play and play and practice and for about eight or ten years, mm -hmm. seven, eight years. So, and now it's just... I go back know, and I practice sometimes, but I don't have the... I mean, I'm not going to be... Right. You know, Jeff Beck again. Right. I would like to be. Um, but I play piano a lot. I still write a lot of music and write songs. And Early on, did you contribute music to films any, at all? Or? That's how I got into acting, was that I... It is, okay. I wrote music for plays, and then I started writing music for movies... And through a series of events, I just sort of thought, oh, I could do that. Because I would go to rehearsals and teach people the songs I was writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, not to disparage them, but it's, I, it seemed pretty easy to me. Mm -hmm. And I was always sort of a, a person that could cause an uproar by doing very little. Um, so, especially in high school. Because, again, in high school, I was having a terrible time. And I, would just tr I was very disruptive, in a, but a very clamped down Catholic school. Mm hmm so you couldn't really do anything outwardly crazy, but you could have an attitude even. Subversive, a yeah, level oh, of subversive behavior. I mean, I'd be sent home and suspended for no reason. There's no reason. I mean, mm -hmm. if they had a trial, there's no evidence. There's nobody, you know, they were just, <laughs> right. they were just sick of my presence. So knowing that, I, and I also, um, another reason that I thought I could be in movies was that I was living, I was in a commune in the early 70s. Yeah, where was that? Where was it? Jamaica Plain, right outside oh, Boston, Boston. Mm -hmm. Boston suburb. Sure. Um, and some young woman from BU who was a film student came to our commune and asked if she could make a, a documentary about, she was making a documentary, a series of them about different family styles. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to see what it would like to document. And so I made this document, documentary about our uh, commune. And she would come to the house meetings and she would come to dinners and sort of follow us around and then she cut it together and showed it at BU and we all went, you know, um, and I'd never seen myself in anything because, you know, it's the seventies, there was videotape, but it was really, this is new and you didn't, you know, you had home movies, but I was a little kid and the movie starts, the documentary starts mm -hmm. and you know, the people moving and I come on screen and the place goes crazy. People are laughing and pointing at me and every time I open my mouth, they're like, ah! and <laughs> I thought, First of all, I thought, yeah. is that really the way I act? Because I, I had such a sort of, I still act not that differently in that, sort of very quiet but odd and sort of in right. his own world and making references to things no one else is, not caring whether people got the references I was making, just mm -hmm. sort of. Um, but I knew then, having had that experience, that I could be in movies. I mean, I wasn't a stupid person. I knew that if you could, if you could create that much uproar by doing very little. Again, same thing you were doing in, in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, without the that, priests that's, trying to get in your pants. Yes. Um, so when music started g being troublesome to me, and I started feeling really like unfulfilled, having done it for for a long time, I thought, well, I can always act. You know, even though I'd never acted, I had no idea whether I could or not. And and that's when I just most people. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's go on. Most people would would be thinking you got to go to like. Los Angeles or Hollywood to do that like there wasn't you know much going on in those days no it was 1978 and it was New York City and there was a lot of plays there were plays I thought you said movies but there are movies the movies the movies were centered the movie companies were centered here 
right. in the 70s and 80s and 90s. They moved out to California m as the end of the century came. Mm -hmm. um, so I would audition for everything mm -hmm. um, when I started working. But I just, I would go in and audition. I had no, I no idea uh -huh. how to do this. I didn't, you know. And I would just sort of had an idea, like if I were directing a movie, what would I want to see from somebody? And mm -hmm. I would sort of do those things. The, uh, the commune w in Jamaica Plain, where in Jamaica Plain was that? Located. Revere Street? Mm -hmm. Do you know Revere? Revere. I mean, every other block is probably called Revere. I mean, where, where in Jamaica Plain did I live? Yeah. Like, well, like, yeah. Where was it situated? Well, Jamaica Plain has that. Yeah. You're at the low, end of the. You're you know at the end the, of the. That, that, that lake that's there? Yes, that, of course. And it, I'm like two blocks from that. I was two blocks away back the, toward, the, toward the Orange Line. And the Orange Line ended there? Yeah. Or something, right? Didn't it? And, it, or one of the and lines the Green ended. Line did, too. The Green Line, green was, line. A, was a weird one, the ones that, yeah, that the ended at Huntington Avenue. Archway Line. line I, forget, it's all, I lived out there, too. Oh. But a few years later. Not long after. Oh, okay. In the early to mid 80s I lived in Jamaica Plain I lived in Jamaica Plain and I lived in this weird spot that you know we're exactly at the spot where the uh, Arboretum Ar I was not far from the Arboretum so I had some great How experiences far? at the Arboretum I bet and the cemetery Jama uh, Forest Hill Cemetery yes. they you know r there was a road that you go through the literally the gatehouse yes I know and the before gate. you get, I'm sorry you go through the entrance but before you get to the entrance of not explaining it really well, but there's a long winding way. And just before you get to the real cemetery entrance where there's a gate, uh -huh. there's a little road, private road yeah. off the side. Yeah. And it kind of wound its way back down to the bottom right by where the Arboretum is, you know, right, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. And that little winding road, I forget the name of the street, but it had houses on it. And, of course, and, and I lived in one of those houses for oh, okay. a brief period of time, for like a year. You know, I this know family exactly was there. I, I had some... Oh, sure. Take your time, of course. We'll take a break. How's it sounding? How's it sounding? Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah very good. Oh. It's coming out much better than I would have ever thought. <laughs> Kidding. <clears throat> so, so you know you know where I was talking about. It, it was this, and I just vaguely knew that it, it was like this family that owned the house. They were had to move to another, take an apartment in a, some other area because their kid was having a lot of problems in the school district, in the uh -huh. school that he was going. So they wanted to move to like somewhere a little Tony or maybe, so they could. And so they like needed where, like Somerville, another, or? yeah, so, well, not probably not Somerville, but uh, you know, just a nicer neighborhood, maybe right next to Cleveland Circle, the other side of away from. Cambridge. Going oh, the other oh okay. What was that yeah, neighborhood? Yeah, where, the Jewish where, where Boston College is, you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, there's, yeah. But it was like a, a prosperous neighborhood. And then also um, it could have been maybe even Cambridge. I don't know. But they yeah. wanted to put their kid in a better school. So they needed – so me and this friend of mine. Boston. I think it was the other direction, but okay. <laughs> this is be a great show. It's going to be it's, so great. <laughs> two old people <laughs> talking about – you ever you used to hate, hate about my parents is that – well, no, there were so many things. They couldn't but, get a word out. That, no, but my, when people would show up back in the 50s at your house to visit, the two parents, two fathers, mm -hmm. would spend the first 45 minutes. Talking about the trip. How they got there. Yeah. Did you take the turn off? Yeah. And did you notice the place is torn down now? And did you do the short? All you, the took, you took one? What are you, an idiot? <laughs> And they would talk about routes and where you yeah. went. Oh, yeah. And now you've I mean, you got G GPS. What do right. you do? The GPSs talk to each other? I mean... What they do now is they argue with the GPS. Yeah. You know. <laughs> My dad just argues with it. He doesn't believe it. It's, uh, he just he Where'd refers to, to it as a her. I went to BU, but oh. I, I didn't finish there. Well, I, I was a, a kind of worse even than you in some ways, in the inter well, or better, or like you, in the sense that I went to, for one year I went to Bard. And, okay, and Bard. Sure. And then that was too small, even though I kind of went to summer camp up in that area upstate up in the Hudson Valley for years, and I, that was the draw for me. But it was so small back when I went. It was so small, the student body. and uh, It still is pretty. Pretty small, yeah, but yeah. it's bigger. And it's also more, you know, more, a lot more connected to the, you know, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. It connected to the area, you know, people that live around there. Then I did the opposite, and I went to BU. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking. I was, uh, I was uh, equally as unhappy there. Yeah. So I eventually came back down here, and I and I went to. I taught at BU for a while, off and on. Ray Ray Carney is there? You know Ray Carney? No, no. Who's that? Ray Carney is one of my biggest proponents. I mean, he's this guy who writes a lot about Cassavetes. Oh, okay. And because of my connection to Cassavetes, we became became started talking to each other, and then 
he would come down and watch me rehearse the people and he loved my movies and wrote was writing a book he's he's writing a book about me but god knows now that i don't do much i mean i haven't directed so many movies as i, I looked see. like i was going to direct when i first started but, but what was your connection to cassavetes then I worked on Gloria. I was an actor in oh, Gloria. Right. Okay. And then, then after that, we became friends, and I would send him my scripts, and I'd go visit his house. I knew his kids and spent a lot of time with him and Jenna and mm -hmm. was sort of a friend. She, she's, she's magnificent. Yeah. That Jenna. I love her. Yeah. There should be a retrospective, like a proper retrospective of her work, like of her acting. like just Lonely like, Other Brave. You ever see Lonely sure, Other Brave? Sure, of course. She's fucking great in it. She's and beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah she's... You know, Mini Moscow. I mean, well, then his work, of course, yeah, yeah, all their yeah. collaborations. But uh, with Val Avery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Right. Val Avery. Oh, I love him. Work with Val twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a podcast unto itself. <clears throat> Val Is he Avery. Still around? That's a good question. Because he used to live can't... over in Sheridan Square. Oh, really? Yeah. He. I shouldn't start talking about. It. Yeah. But no, was, please do. A... Give me an anecdote. He Val was... Avery. I, I love he him. He was a fun guy. I mean, he was. On, I did. Um, he's on Easy Money. <laughs> your your experience with Rodney Dangerfield is terrible. terrible. That wasn't a question; it was more of a reference. But yes, oh, yeah. it was it was a question too. Yeah, but it was terrible. But I mean, I used to go back. I used to go up into the lounge or where the green room they had, and I would hang mm -hmm. out with Tom Ewell, the Val, great Tom Ewell from uh, from, from, from like it hot or not some like it hot, but he was in uh, a the, million. The the one where the Bachelor. Oh no, he was like married and his wife's away. Yeah, yeah. And he it's, has it's, an affair with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, him, what I, directions did you take to get your time? He was there. Geraldine Fitzgerald. Hey, oh, Geraldine Fitzgerald was also in that movie, and both of Scorsese's parents were in the movie. So I'd go up to the old person sort of lounge where all the people would hang out in one of these houses and and, and just talk to these people. I was like, I don't know why. I just this is Gloria. No, this is on Easy Money. Easy Money. That, what a weird cast. Oh, they had all these great, great, and Jennifer Jason Lee was in it. Uh -huh. um, that was good. Jeffrey been Jones, really young. Great, guy, great character. Yeah. So, and Val Avery though he was, uh, yeah, he used to tell me all these stories. And I knew John. I knew Cassavetes at that point. So J he and I would talk about, you know, mm -hmm. our experience with John. And mm -hmm. He would try to read my scripts. I used to, uh, you know, I was really. What happened is, not to mention or was what, was, is I was in this play, mm -hmm. Buried Child, and there was this casting guy named Vic Ramos, sort of the casting guy. For thugs. Mm -hmm. So John was doing this movie, Gloria, and he called up somehow my agent and said, we're looking for all these, like, dang, we need dangerous guys. So send us all, and send Tom, you know. So they, I go to this room, and there's, like, a dozen other big, scary-looking guys. And Vic Ramos comes to us, and he goes, okay, you guys, what's going to happen is we're going to walk in, you're going to stand in a line, you're going to keep your fucking mouth shut, mm -hmm. John's going to look at you, and then we're going to turn around and we're going to leave. That's what's going to happen. Don't open your mouth. Don't move. Don't do anything. Just do what I say. So I go, yeah, sure. So we, we, the door opens up to go into John's office. And the bunch of us start to go through. And I push my way to the front. And I run across the office and grab Cassavetes and says, I say, you got to hire me, man. you got to hire me. you got to hire me. I want to work with you. And Cassavetes, of course, thinks this is funny because that's the kind of person he is. And, and Vic Ramos is grabbing on me and saying, sorry, John, sorry, what is wrong with this? Sit the fuck. And there was this like fist fight back between me and the casting guy. And then they asked me to leave. And so, <laughs> so I left. And I went back, you know, started wandering around. I called my service, which they had services back then. Oh, right. yeah. And it was a call from my agent, all upset, I could tell. He was upset because I had done another crazy thing. What did thing. you do? Well, I, did, I always do these things at auditions that people sure. get very upset about. And so they, well, back then they did. Um, he said, so I called him up and said, what? And he said, you got the job. I said, what do you mean I got the job? He said, you're going to be doing, you're playing the, the thug in John Cassavetti's movie. You've never been in a movie. This is your first job. And I said, well, I'll do it only if, and the guy says, shut up. I said, no, I'm only going to do it if he comes to see me in Barry Child. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. I want it on the contract. I want it in the contract that he has to come. I said, you send him that message. And he said, you can't do that. He's going to really... I said, no. He's gonna. So he comes to the play. And he brings Ben Gazzara and Peter Falk oh and Jenna God. and all those guys that he used to hang out with. Yeah. At, at, Circle, what was at Circle Rep. Right. But there's one more 
the blonde guy. Blonde Wait. guy. He, he, his uh, mini, Moskowitz. Oh, oh, uh, Seymour Cassell. Seymour Cassell. He didn't come. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, could have been a, not so bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he comes. Check that one off. It, what, Val Am- Val Avery on on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what's his name? Seymour Seymour, 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 Cassell. Seymour Cassell, of course. I would love him. Yeah, Difficult. Yeah, yeah, all right. All right. Yeah. I mean, he's great. He's just yeah. Uh, um, so he comes to the play, and then afterwards he takes me and this woman who I was seeing at the time um, to this restaurant, which is right next to Circle Rep, and we sat and and he had these guys came around and gave everybody roses. And we had this big dinner, and everybody got really drunk, and you know that was the beginning of my friendship, sort of with him. <laughs> um, that's a great story But he was actually also doing a lot of plays, right? Not a lot of people Didn't he do some plays? I mean, plays? he had plays of his own stuff Like he did Opening Night as a play uh-huh. um, He had a play that he was working on at the Public Which I saw him work with That was right at the end of his life When he was really sick That was such an act to see Yeah And when I, I also was with him on the the set of the of the of this movie called The Tempest by Mazursky well, you and you were in William Phil, by the way, right? That I was that was like a bit real. That was an early one of his films. That was the first. Yeah, I'm. Be, I'm that's not, can, I can't okay. really say I'm in that. The one good thing I is I didn't see it. It's the only one I think of of Mazursky's I didn't see. It's. it's I think it's all. I don't know. I shouldn't. But it's Sven Nyquist shot it, so oh. it was my first gig. And Sven Nyquist, Ingmar Bergman's guy. Yes. Um. But, yeah. So I was on the set of. The of, Tempest. Um, of The Tempest. Which, right, which was you would have thought would have been a Cassavetes film because it was with yeah. Cassavetes, R- Roland, and uh, Mazursky's in it, right. and uh, Raul Julia. And, uh, and all these comics, all these old comics. Right. But so we would, John, you know, didn't work every day, so we would meet in this the lounge of this hotel in Greece, and then later in Rome, and he would bring out bunches of plays, he'd have bunches of plays sent out, so we'd be reading Noel Coward and, mm-hmm. you know, Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Just like, at like you know, during lunch. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, I was, uh, did you see so you were? But you didn't really have much time with Mazursky then. Mazursky, I knew pretty good because oh. he knew my brother. My brother was in my brother John Ford Noonan, uh-huh. the famous playwright. Um, he was in Next Stop Greenwich Village, which was Paul's one oh, of sure. Paul's first movies. Yeah, 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 sure. It was very autobiographical. Yeah, Christopher Walken with Lenny and, uh, Lenny Green Lenny. Lenny Right, who died shortly yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, with a cancer in his throat. Yeah, Ellen Green. Yeah, Lenny. Ellen Green was in that. That's right. But She's I, lovely. so I knew what I liked. I used to. Yeah. Used to. What's not to like? She's so cute. Yeah. But of offbeat way. Hey, cute is cute, man. Who cares? <laughs> offbeat, onbeat. I'll take cute. <laughs> but he, he was in that movie, so I got to know him a little bit. Then I was not acting. Then this is like 1972. Mm-hmm. I think I just dropped out of college, and I was hanging around with my brother, and mm-hmm. that's when I first met Walken. And so I knew Paul a little bit, and then, I don't know, Paul, I, I just sort of knew him a little bit. And then he came to see Barry Child, and he said, you want to, there's a tiny part, but you know, you should be, you mm. know. So I did this tiny part. And then, um, I get, oh gosh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to get to my kids thing soon, uh, which I really now want to continue with this. Uh, but uh, just last uh, part, maybe just the Jarmish thing then, because you were over here. Okay. Oh, you've heard the story about the Jarmish thing? No, I, I, I've tried not to do, because that will, if I read too much or watch too much, then it, what it happens is it'll I mean, that control the way that, I that ask That experience the is as bad or worse than Heaven's Gate, just to give you an idea. We, we should, maybe we should do a tar- part two of this. All right, we'll do uh, The really bad, exp- you know. The, the bad stuff. <laughs> bad experiences. <laughs> <laughs> getting electrocuted and getting in, the, thrown um, off horses and, you know. All sorts intentionally, of which, yeah. which was, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe then it's a can of worms. Um, it's a can of worms. Yeah, I'm also f- I sort of getting to the point in my life where I don't, you know, I'm not that old, but I'm getting old enough that I could sort of say anything I want, but I'm not quite old enough. And some of the people I would say things about, they're probably young enough they would come after me. So I'm. Oh, I see. See, so you, you got to be still a little cautious. A little bit. Yeah. You can also have a s- re- reflect on it, and then also if there's <laughs> something that you said that you regret, can, you can do something about it still. <laughs> Though I was going to put this up awfully quick. That's okay. I, mean, I haven't said anything terrible yet. No. Just about uh, Seymour, uh, Seymour Cassell. Yeah. That's about the worst of it. But I don't think he would come after you at this <laughs> stage. So I, I don't. He, I, he's, I, he's wonderful. I mean, he's great in that movie. But he's, and he's, I barely know him. He's, but he's, he's, got, he's complicated. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. just an ego and yeah. all that. Right? Like a lot of people. Yeah. Um, 
Well, if you, uh, unless you're just uh, humoring me, I've taken a lot of your time, so I appreciate it. It just seems like barely scraping the surface, but I got a lot of stories, man. Yeah, a lot of stories, a lot of audition <laughs> stories, a lot of production stories. <laughs> All right, well then, then we'll do it sometime. In the okay, if next you gotta year. go, you gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I have, uh, and people should see my movies, though. That's what you know. If there's anything you could, uh, I will. I mean, well, first of all, see, for, we didn't even talk about Anomalies, which is really stupid. Uh, but because it's it's not really stupid. It's not. It's a little stupid. Oh, you mean the movie? No, I don't mean the movie. I mean <laughs> that I didn't talk. You know what I meant? That I didn't really dwell on it at all. But yeah. um, I loved it. And uh, of course, the last last action hero. Um, mm-hmm. No, and you worked with and David the shape Gordon. of something squashed. The shape of something squashed was your, which is your most recent. My adaptation. most recent, where yes, right. I feel like I'm in Joe Franklin's memory. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, friends. Whoa. You but you also worked with a couple of people like uh, that uh, David Gordon Green, who's done this. I've, yes, I've had him on a few times. Davey. You, you, he he was that was a good experience. No angels, and then uh, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm he like liked my music you. a lot, so he oh. was going to put he oh. he was going to put my music in that movie, and then mus- my music in the movie after that, and he never did. But I I'd, I'd love to work with him. I just don't know why he and, didn't call me up. Oh he, well, he will. We'll have him call. I'll make sure he does that. What a, what a, what an incredible like breadth of. Of people to work with, though, or, or and be and directed by. Met. Just beyond. I can, I know. I want to ask. I met more about Nuryev. That. Nuryev made me dinner. Rudolf Nuryev. I know who. No, I, what did I, I? I didn't think you were talking about Moisha Nuryev. <laughs> I, I had a feeling you were. Getting, uh, <laughs> and Ty West. I, Ty. I, I, and now I feel like an idiot after saying. Well, no. I mean, I, uh, now I would insult Ty West by saying after you're saying Nuryev, and then I bring up Ty West. But Ty West is a very. T- yeah, I yeah, think yeah. he's a great yeah. horror director. Yeah. He's got a new film. But you did the House of the Devil, which I thought you were great in. So many. That was fun. That was one of your. Uh, that was a lead, right? Would you consider that a, a lead? Although you were missing in the section of it, right? You well, disappeared. the girl's alone in the house. It's She's alone fault. in the house for a big chunk. For like 45 minutes. For 45 minutes. Am I a lead in that one? Once you're back, though. Well, you, inter- you interview Michael Caine and say, Michael, were you a lead in that one? In <laughs> Alfie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did just meet. I just was in this something where I was at a, 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 some sort of like swanky thing, and I went, and he was standing there. And uh, Caine was? Yeah. He's no- a great person. I imagine, he, but it's like I didn't know what how to break the ice, and then somebody said, "Say I'm a film journalist." I looked, I looked up. I've loved your movies since I was a little kid, and that works. Yeah, you mean that you just tell them what I'm thinking? Yeah, the truth. I met him because my uh, my ex did a movie with him, Jaws: The Revenge, uh-huh. and so I was in Nassau with him for a while. And he's just the, he's just all those guys are. I mean, yeah. the, the few of those guys that I met, like Finney, is just they're just incredible. Oh, right, the the, the fun, the wolf generous stories. people. Oh. All right, well, we'll do part two. I'll book it with you so we can... Well, they're making a documentary of Wolf, and they're also making a documentary about Manhunter now, another one. So I think it's a studio deal, though. That's, oh, okay. that's a little... A that's little weird. Uh, is there like a spate of uh, documentaries about movies cult movies or, or just the ones you're in? God knows. I don't know. Like uh, a Wolfen. I, you know, what's the weird running thing? My dad was in magazine publishing. I grew up, and he would always get the – in here in New York City. And I would get all – and he would get all these um, – all the invitations to all uh-huh. the premieres and the, and um, some press screenings, but mostly premiere nights of – so he'd go. And he would always take me – and we had a small family, my sister and my mom. So, or, so I'd go So you grew up in Manhattan? Well, I grew up in, in Queens, but okay. they moved into Manhattan, and, and I, um, they were in the village for a long time. And then I lived in, in the city for a long time and, and been in Brooklyn after that. And I just, oh, so many of the movies. Gloria, was that like the New York premiere of that? Gloria. Yeah, and, yeah, and, I, and I, I wouldn't have gone to that, but yeah. No, I but no, no, I don't think, I, it may have just been like a mostly like press and people like that. And, yeah. or, or it was, I don't remember seeing anybody like from the film in that particular one. But we go to a ton of these, and, one, and another one was probably Wolfen. Like, it was just that whole period in the 80s where yeah. we went all the time because I was like well, the a teenager. the movie business was here, too, more than it is. Now it's all out there, all the executives and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so there's lots more to, to chat with. So, well, if you are if you're actually mean it and you're, 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 you don't mind and I haven't annoyed you too much, then yeah, we'll do not it. Not too much. Okay. I mean, if you promote my stuff, give a couple I, uh, of people to watch one of my movies, uh, yeah, it'd be worth it to me. I'll do that. <laughs> you, you bet. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you again. Yeah.